Hi, my name is Xi Yang. In this video, I'm going to explain a 2017 paper on the effect of using large batch sizes in training deep neural networks. Mini-batch stochastic gradient descent is an effective algorithm for training neural networks. Here is a quick recap of the algorithm. We first split our dataset into many small batches. For each iteration, we calculate and average the gradients in the batch, which we then use to update our model parameters. Some of the common batch sizes of choice are 32, 64, 512, and so on. This means that our batch sizes are usually much smaller than the size of our dataset. Now, mini-batch SGD can be accelerated by distributing the computation of gradients into multiple processing units. However, due to the inherent sequential nature of SGD, such parallelization is only applicable within a single batch, but not across batches. So you might be asking, why can't we just increase the batch size to enable large parallelization? The answer is, yeah, but at a sacrifice of test accuracy. In practice, people have found that large batch sizes frequently results in degradation in the quality of the model sometimes as large as a 5% drop. Analyzing and explaining the discrepancies between small and large batch training is the main contribution of this paper. The author calls such discrepancy the generation gap. The paper was authored by Nitish Shirish Keshar and colleagues from Northwestern University and Intel. Let's first take a look at how the authors set up the experiment. They divide the experiment into two regimes, small batch training with batch size 256 and large batch training with batch size 15,000. The goal is to compare performance between the two. They choose two basic neural network architectures as test subjects, the fully connected network and convolutional network, and the supervised learning on standard research datasets as training tasks. And here are the accuracy results during the 100 epochs of training. We can observe that in both SB and LB regimes, the training accuracies, which are displayed as dotted lines, converge to similar values. However, for testing accuracy, which indicates performance on unseen data, we can consistently observe a gap between the two regimes. This tells us that there's a difference in generalization performance between SB and LB regimes. But why is that the case? To find the answer, let's run more analysis. We obtain sets of parameters we train from both SB and LB. Let's make a new hybrid parameter set by mixing parameters from both regimes via a linear combination controlled by value alpha. We then apply an objective function, for example our loss function, to our hybrid parameter set. Let's take a look at what this hybrid represents under different values of alpha. We start with the simplest case where alpha equals to 0 and 1. Our hybrids are simply just our parameters from SB and LB regimes respectively. Next, if alpha is set to be somewhere between 0 and 1, our hybrid is effectively a linear mix between model parameters for SB and LB. Now, if we push alpha above 1, we can reorder the terms and observe that our hybrid is just a small batch parameters plus some perturbation. Now, let's apply our loss function to the hybrids and see how it behaves, as seen in the blue line. We also plot the accuracy as the red line. In other words, for blue line, lower is better, and for red line, higher is better. We can observe that at alpha equals to zero, where our hybrid is just SB parameters, our accuracy stays high and loss value stays low, even if we move alpha further to the left to introduce more perturbation. Now, let's reverse course. As we gradually reduce the influence of small batch parameters and march into the large batch territory, we can still retain good performance, up to the point where SB parameters is just completely replaced by LB ones. However, things start to deteriorate abruptly as we begin to introduce small perturbations to the large batch model, where loss skyrockets and accuracy plummets, as shown here to the right. We can consistently observe similar patterns on more architectures and datasets as shown in these plots. Furthermore, here we're also seeing a small performance drop in the middle during the morphing from SB to LB. Combined with deterioration on the right that we've seen, it seems to tell us that regions around LB parameters have low level of tolerance. In other words, on small batch models, perturbation is handled smoothly, whereas perturbation could easily bring ruin to the large batch regime. As a result, the authors conjecture that large batch models have sharper minima than small batch ones. Here is a visualization of this idea. During testing phase, when presented with a new unseen data, a flat minimum would have a much better chance at producing an output that results in small loss, whereas a sharp minimum might just miss the mark completely. In short, if our parameters stays in a flat basin, it indicates stableness and tolerance. In other words, it is desirable to get out of the sharp minima during training. The authors further conjecture that for small batch training, noise in the gradient tends to push the parameters out of the basins of attraction of sharp minimizers and encourages movement towards a flatter minimizer. And once there, noise will no longer cause exit from such flat basin. So how can we quantitatively calculate the sharpness of a region? For the interest of time, I won't go into details, but the gist of the idea is to define the neighborhood of a point in the parameter space and measure the maximum value in that neighborhood, which serves as an approximation of how sensitive a neighborhood is to perturbation. And with the definition of sharpness, the authors ran more experiments that quantitatively show that large batch sizes indeed make parameters land in much sharper regions, as indicated by high values of the LB columns here. So if sharp minimizers is the cause of the performance drop, is there any solution? 
The authors suggest some methods such as data augmentation, adversarial training, and dynamic sampling. Please check out the paper if you'd like to learn more details. There has also been a lot of work since this paper to tackle large batch training, and we expect to see more state-of-the-art results in the near future. Thanks for listening, and special thanks to Alice and Amir for providing feedback for this video.